Hello, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Mike Salmon from Harvest Christian Fellowship. Today I'm going to talk to you, uh, and we start our book in the book of Ephesians. This is a book of Ephesians um, commentary. So we are using the King James Version, and we are using Greek, uh, the Greek words and translations. So I hope this uh, allows you to kind of get a little deeper understanding of the book of Ephesians and uh, where this book came from. This uh, book was written by the Apostle Paul, and it was written to the church in Ephesus. Ephesus was a very uh, big city. It was a city that uh, where the Princess Diana, uh, uh, not, I'm sorry, Princess Diana, the goddess Diana was worshipped. Um, and uh, the Apostle Paul and other apostles had very strong resistance. But the church in Ephesus was a, a very wealthy church, but it was a very good church in the sense that uh, they came to understand what it means. And, and the book of Ephesians really talks about our life prior to Christ, in Christ, and it talks about Christian conduct. So I hope this helps you out a little, and we'll go ahead and, and, and uh, start this study. And as you can see, we, we also have other studies that are available in the book of Galatians and others that will help you uh, come to understand the text a little bit better. So this is chapter one, and we're going to be doing chapter by chapter. So you'll have different chapters if you would like to uh, study on a particular chapter. So he starts a letter saying, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, uh, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, that's you and me, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual, and I like this, spiritual blessings and uh, uh, in heavenly places in Christ. Okay, so whenever you see a word like this, this italicized, this has been added. So, so it would really read blessings in heavenly in Christ, okay, so he's blessed us spiritually. You know, we always look for the material blessings, and God does bless us materially. But take a look at this spiritual, which is non carnal blessings that we have in Christ. This is uh, eloquence, elegance of language, that is adoration. Uh, these are things that God has blessed us with in heavenly places above the sky, and, and that's what we have in Christ. When we came to Christ, we have now a right stand, a good adoration, but in God and in through God by Jesus Christ. It was because of Jesus Christ that we are in right standing with God and we have a place in Christ uh, there. Okay, It says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And, you know, a lot of people kind of say, well, God planned this from the beginning, that this was ordained, and it was. Um, and so much as before the foundation of the world does not so necessarily mean so much that, uh, that God, okay, that God had already ordained the fall of man, sinful man, etc. It was not the will of God for man to sin. This is very important. But what we have here is we have that God chose us in him. Okay, before the foundation of the world. And and this is what we said, chosen him, and then it says, and then we got to stop. Because uh when when the when the apostle Paul wrote in Greek, he didn't there was no commas, there was no uh stops or abbreviations, you know, or pauses. So if you read this, you would say, according as he has chosen us in him, period. Okay, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. And without blame before him in love. So when Christ, when God created the world, what his very purpose was before the foundation of the world, that he would have a people that is holy and without blame. Okay, and this means uh, unblemished, okay, before him in love. But what happened is we find that uh, man sinned. So it was not God's will that man sinned. It was God's will for before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame. But unfortunately, uh, what happened was uh, man sinned. They took, they they did what they're they're not supposed to do. Okay, so, and of course, the word before does not so meant necessarily mean before as much as as it means that is in front of or prior to. Okay, so we see that that was not God's will for man to sin. But what is God's will before the foundation of the world is that we, okay, this means people, us who are in Christ, or us who is godly should be holy and set apart. And he even says it, 
you know, tells Adam and Eve, do not partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do not, do not be part of this world, okay? But unfortunately, sin has its effects, okay? So I hope this helps you a little kind of understand a little bit about when it comes down to punctuation and understanding text, okay? Um, according as he has chosen us, this has confused a lot of people because they've said, well, how are we chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world? Christ was not even here. You know, or, you know, Jesus wasn't even born and we weren't even in sin. And and so this is very confusing. But if we were to stop in this, it says, In heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him. Uh, and then what he, and then we go on. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And then it says, having predestined us. And then you can see, uh, to limit in advance, that is predetermined. He's predetermined us. Okay, and this is again a very confusing word, but it means predestined means he he predetermined. Okay, he predetermined us to do what? Unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So he predetermined, he determined, and when did this de de uh, uh, determination happen? Well, a lot of people argue, well, this happened before the world, this happened after the world. But it, that's not what the text says. It says that he predetermined, he determined that he ordained us, that means you and I who are believers, unto the adoption, okay, that we would come to, the, to himself or to God by Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will. So again, makes the text a little bit more open, lets us understand what God determined. He determined that we would come through Christ. And how did he do that? Well, when when man sinned, he had a goal. He had an ultimate goal, and that would be that Jesus Christ would come. He would come in the flesh as Christ, and he would die on the cross for our sins, and we would be we would come through adoption by Jesus Christ. And then it says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has accepted in or he has made us accepted in the beloved. Okay, again, strong words, beautiful words, um, because we see here again, uh, God gave given us something that we don't deserve. Uh, wherein, um, and then He says He has made us accepted. All right, and and as okay or in would be concerned in the position of uh, the beloved, and and this very strong that. Uh, again, it's very important to understand the Greek. It's very important to understand the 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 way this text is being said here and what he's saying. So I'm going to just take a moment because Ephesians 1 is, is a very good book or, you know, very first chapter. So I'm going to kind of take a moment and kind of read this so you kind of see it. You know, uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed you and me with all spiritual blessings uh, in heavenly places or spiritual blessings uh, in heavenly places in Christ. Uh, according as he's chosen us in him. Uh, before the foundation of the world, he determined that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He predetermined us uh, to come to become children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And then he says, to the praise and of the glory of his grace, or by his grace, wherein he's accepted us as the beloved. Okay, and again, now we see a little bit more. Uh, of course, I'm taking a liberty as I'm reading this, uh, but kind of say, showing you that this is God's uh, purpose, and His purpose is that we would come and become children uh, as He ordained that we'd be holy, blameless before Him from the beginning. Unfortunately, sin has its toll and has, has done what it's done. Okay, so let's go ahead and read on. He says, In whom we have redemption. This is redemption. Um, a ransom through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he has purposed in himself. And this word mystery is, is used so much in the text. We see it in Colossians, we see it in Philippians, we see it in, in now in Ephesians, the mystery. And this is a secret. And what is a secret is that we who are Gentiles, who, don't, who weren't called children of God, weren't called people of God, would become his people, would become his children. And of course, this happens through his blood, okay? It happens through his blood, and we are now accepted as the beloved or in the beloved, okay? Um, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, he made known 
he showed us uh, according to his good pleasure. And then it says that in the dispensation, very good, strong word again, that this is God's purpose, his stewardship or how he dealt with things of the fullness of times, he might gather into one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Now, did this already happen? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, Jesus says, all things have been given unto me in heaven and on earth. I have all power and authority. And everything in heaven and everything on earth happened in Christ. Okay, This dispensation is not in the future. This dispensation is now in Christ. That everything is gathered in one, all things in Christ. Now, whether you're Jew or Gentile, there's only one way for us to come to Christ or come to God, and that is in Christ Jesus, and there is no other way. It says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predetermined, again, or, or that is, again, limit to limit in advance, determined before, according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should, to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, okay, period, that's it, bam, we do it. How do we do it? When we trusted in Christ, we obtained inheritance. We this and this determination that all his purpose would come through Christ. That was his counsel. That was his idea. That was his plan. Okay, and this word count counsel is his purpose. That was his that was what he wanted to do. Okay, there's not really major secret things here other than we see that this was God's plan, that Jews and Gentiles would come in the whole world, heaven or hell, or heaven and earth, heaven or hell, heaven or earth, it was almost hell, uh, would come through Christ. And then it says, in whom you also after you heard, and I'm going to remove trusted, you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I love that, the Holy Spirit of promise, or the announcement. We have received, we got a pledge through the Holy Spirit that Christ would be our salvation. It is through the Holy Spirit. And I like this word, after you believe, you were sealed. Okay, this means to stamp, preserve, that God told us, he sealed it up. He told us that it is going to be through the Holy Spirit of promise. This is a great thing because this gives us a joy. This gives us a thing. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit reminds us of our redemption. He reminds us, he reminds us of the salvation we have in Christ Jesus. Um, that he never left us alone. He didn't leave us orphans, but he gave us the helper, the counselor, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. It says, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And I like that, redemption of the purchased possession. It reminds me of a time I go to Sears and I buy something at Sears and they give you like a ticket. And you've got, you got this ticket and this ticket says you paid for it. This is yours, you own it, and everything, but you don't actually collect it until you go down to the first floor, and you give it, you punch it all in, and this guy comes out, and he takes your ticket, and he brings your product out to you. This is exactly what we see with the Holy Spirit's earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And, and again, purchased possession is acquisition, okay? This happened, there was an exchange here, okay? Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Uh, this is wonderful, because love unto all the saints. Do you love Christians? Do you love other believers in Jesus Christ? It's important. He says, I don't cease to give thanks to God. Okay, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of glory of his inheritance in the saints. And this is a great prayer that we may know the th wonderful things of God. And I assure you, if you're listening to this video, this is one, one great way of knowing. You're growing in Christ and you're understanding the wisdom. You're understanding the riches and the things that you have in Jesus Christ. You are special. You are special. You are a child of God. As believers in Jesus Christ, we stand on the promise of God. We are his children. Nothing 
Nothing can harm us. God is in total control. And if anything comes against us, God has a purpose. God has a reason they come in. And, you know, He's good. He is a good God. And we need to trust. We need to trust that. Praise God. And then it says, What? And what the exceeding greatness of His power to us word, who believe according to the working of His mighty power. And I like that. Great, exceeding greatness of His power. Okay, His power. Okay, we say dunamis or miraculous power. To who? To us, to you and me who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And again, you go power, great power, and the working of his mighty power. Okay, domination and his forcefulness and the things that God has for us. He says, which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly. And this is again, right hand meaning the power that Christ, that in Christ all power, all authority, everything has been given through Jesus Christ. When he rose from the dead bodily, when he rose, all power and authority, everything was given in Christ. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. And this is awesome because there we see the fullness of God. We see the fullness of Christ. We see that the king of kings that we serve is not only just a man who's raised from the dead, but he has received all power, authority, everything. God had been, Jesus Christ in the flesh, when raising from the dead, has morphed Okay, morphosis. There has occurred this morphosism, in which Christ becomes the fullness of the God of God, and all power, authority, and He is the head of the body, the church. That's you and me. What an awesome God we serve. So again, chapter one is very full of wonderful things, reminding us of who we are and what God's purpose is, and and how He's made His purpose of you and I becoming part of the family of God. That concludes chapter 1.